Okay, this is E2902 week 2 uh, lecture 2. So today we're going to continue with uh, flip-flops. And recall that last time we worked on, we justified the reason for memory using feedback and latches. We talked about the SR latch, the gated SR latch, the gated D latch. However, it would be nice if our uh, system or our hardware was edge sensitive instead of level sensitive. So we did the master slave D flip flop. So today, what we're going to do is we're going to look at other kinds of flip flops. Uh, but mainly, we're going to look at the T flip flop. There are other kinds of the other kind of flip flop that is there. There are two other kinds of flip flop besides the D flip flop, the T flip flop and the JK flip flop. But uh, note that other flip flops can be realized. using a D flip-flop. So that's why I only talk about the T flip-flop. And because of this, FPGAs, which are our platform for implementing logic, oops, have only D flip-flops. But the reason why we even do the T flip-flop is because it is good practice, but it is good practice uh, to understand how to implement T flip-flop and it also leads to uh, this also leads to concepts of finite state diagrams and for FSMs or fi I mean finite state diagrams, finite state machines, FSMs. But we really don't need a justification for learning something new. Okay, uh, it's it's fascinating that all these ideas work the way they work. Uh, so from now on, I'm not gonna say this is why we need this or this is why we need that. We just wanna learn it. So, what is the T flip flop or toggle flip flop? And as we did last time, the schematic component for this is given by T. I mean, like just like the D, we're going to assume it's, or we're going to design a positive edge trigger T flip flop. Okay, and the characteristic table. For this device, so here is clock, here is T, okay. So the full characteristic table is like this. So on the rising edge of the clock, if T is zero, the state doesn't change. Uh, and state is another term for memory, okay. So I'm going to interchangeably, I'm probably just going to use state because that's what it is. And people don't say the memory doesn't change, they say the state doesn't change, okay. So it's if it's one, the toggle, then the output is the complement of the previous uh, state. Now, the other, when the clock is a uh, falling edge, zero or one, you don't care what the T is, the state does not change. Okay. Be consistent here. However, uh, rising edge clock is implied because of the picture. Okay. So the characteristic table is just simply abbreviated like this. 0, 1, Q of T, Q naught of T. Okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to so we are going to 
implement T flip flop using a D flip flop plus combinational logic. To do this systematically, we need, we will uh, generate what is called as a state transition table and next state equation for D for the D flip flop and the T flip flop, so we can so we can get the necessary combinational logic. Note that once we start behavioral VHDL, we will not be explicitly using uh, structural. This is structural. Okay. Structural. Let me underline that sense. Uh, specification explicitly, but again you should know um, but you should or we including me should be able to visualize this is a problem with writing on a tablet it's just slow to respond with the screen visualize um, hardware definitely maybe not the combination logic but definitely the number of flip-flops okay so let's look at the D flip-flop I mean, you can directly jump to the T flip-flop uh, but let's look at the D first so here is so I'll put a star on this D Quark, Q, Q naught, D, Q of T, Q of T plus 1. And notice how I've written this in the sense this is our input. This is called as present state. And this is called as next state. So, let's make a sip of my coffee here. So, zero, 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 one, one, zero, one, one. So, uh, let's see, oops. The rising of the clock, uh, Q of T becomes D, right? So, basically, you can see from this. Uh, table that Q of T plus 1 is simply, if you want to write a Boolean equation, it's D times Q naught using um, sum of products, D times Q, but it's simply D, right? And it's kind of obvious. You don't even have to do this. So here is the characteristic equation for the D flip-flop. This makes sense, right? Uh, characteristic equation that the next state is simply D on the rising edge of the clock. Okay. But in the, the difference between this, the state transition table and the characteristic uh, table is that uh, for the D, you just had 0, 1 then QQ, 
But this explicitly tells you that the next state is simply D. Well, let's look at the T flip flop. Okay. So, what is the characteristic or the state transition table for the T flip flop? So, you have T, Q of T, Q of T plus 1, 0, 0. And now, this should actually tell you why this is more, um, this might be more helpful in deriving the combination logic equation than this one for the T flip flop. So, let's look at it. 0, 1. Uh, with the enough experience, you can derive the equation for synthesizing a T flip flop from D flip flop using this table. Let's just look at this one. So 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 1, 1. The next state, if T is 0, you stay the same. If T is 1, this becomes 1, 0. So you toggle, yes? So in other words, the characteristic equation, as you can see, is T and the exclusive OR of Q, therefore, so let's say you want to use a D flip-flop to get a T flip-flop, so here is a D, so T is coming in, but, let's say this is, whoops, 1 and this is 2, so we're using a D flip-flop, since the next state is simply D, but you want the next state to be T exclusive or Q of T to get a T flip-flop, well, very simply, um, so here is the T flip-flop implemented using a D flip-flop. And a very good exercise for you would be an exercise is, this, should, this is in your reading, JK flip-flop using T flip-flop. Oh, actually, uh, let's see, yeah, why not? T flip-flop and D flip-flop. Okay, so that'll be a good exercise for you. Let's look at another example. Okay. So here's example two. Suppose we want to specify a two bit counter using T flip flops. Let's now, the way we are going to uh, specify the counter is we're going to specify using what is called a state transition diagram for a more state machine. We'll cover this in detail in a couple of weeks. But it's not too hard to understand that this is our so this symbol here means initial state okay so the initial state is zero zero or the reset state and the output in here is zero we're gonna so there's actually a two bit ring counter then on the rising edge of the clock you go to zero one output is a one then you go to one zero which is a two and then you go to one one output is a three okay then you go back. So here's a state transition diagram, very easy to understand. So to obtain the equation, let's look at the state transition table. So here is it is Q1 of T, Q0 of T. You can see that we need, so one flip-flop, you can store two bits. So if you need to store, sorry, with one flip-flop, I'm sorry. 
with one flip flop you can store one bit zero or one so if you need two bits we have two bits uh, need at least two flip flops which implies we need two units two bits of memory Starting, of course, this is at least two bits of memory required. Okay. Let me do this properly. So then, what is the next state? So if you are at zero zero, you go to zero one. If you are at zero one, we go to one zero. If you are at one zero, we go to one one. And if you are at one one, we are at zero zero. So, however, since we're using a T flip flop, okay, we can figure out what should the T1 and the T0 be. So, the T0 should be 1, 1, 1, 1. So, the least significant bit, as you can see, flips every clock cycle. The T1 flips every other clock cycle, okay. So, therefore, the characteristic equations are T0 is simply equal to 1. And T1 is simply equal to Q0. Okay. So again, to emphasize of T, you don't want to uh, make T1 functions of T uh, next state. Okay. They're a function of current state. Okay. Notice, obviously, that's my point. Inputs. Or functions of current state. Okay, it doesn't make sense. This will become very vital when we specify uh, sequential logic using behavioral VHDL. As you will see, to avoid latches, uh, the rule of thumb is you separate out the memory uh, update and the state transition logic. We'll do this like next week. For now, they are not functions. Of next state. Okay. Therefore, the circuitry that implements a two bit ring counter is simply T0. You keep toggling this guy, you get key zero. Of course, there is a global clock. Okay. This goes to T1. Then here is Q1. Here is also a clock, okay. and then the complements uh, could be easily extracted. Okay. Then here is the global clock coming in. So here is clock. So now uh, we're almost out of time. So a couple of points. Number one, uh, active low. Clear N, clear N. So this is reset N. In other words, going back here, every sequential logic design must have a well defined reset state. Okay. So it's, it's usually active lows. Actually, it's not. I'm actually using uh, active low because, as we will see next lecture, when we actually specify this in VHDL, you will we're going to use Altera libraries for the default flops, and they are active low clears. So anyway, every sequential logic design must have well-defined reset state note that uh, this design has asynchronous reset that's okay right as long as you make sure you don't have any glitches in your reset line we'll talk about how to do synchronous re uh, reset later in the course in a couple of weeks probably that's about it for today's lecture so next time 
simulate and implement uh, the two bit ring counter in VHDL on the DE1, of course. So the reference design is already up uh, on. So let me take a little bit of time. So let's see, hopefully, this saves. It's not responding. If it crashes, I'll regenerate it. Jesus. Uh, so cancel that. So what I'll do is I'll probably regenerate it, but then let's go to my website and I'll show you where it is and it's where we'll stop. Okay. Oops, it's not here. Online reading material, uh, lecture notes can be found here. So here, structural two-bit counter. This one will download, and we'll go from there. All right. See you next time.